minutes behind schedule uh, so I'm going to call the meeting to order we do not uh, uh, looks like we do not have a quorum at this point oh we do okay uh, oh yes that's right I'm sorry I was always a social scientist I'm not much of a mathematician uh, so we'll we'll proceed and I will ask uh, Commissioner Notariani if you would begin by uh, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we don't really need to go uh, with the Board of Managers anymore, so we'll go right into the, the prison board. Uh, uh, and I trust everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes uh, that were circulated by Tracy a couple of weeks ago. Um, and assuming that you have, I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes. And does I have a second? Second. On the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. The minutes are approved from last month's meeting. Anybody from the public uh, wish to address the board on agenda items only? Dr. Bressler. Doctor, <coughs> excuse me, Dr. Stephanie Bressler from Scranton. Um, the last agenda item, the new business agenda item, revised proposed commissary account policy. Um, as I think everybody knows, other advocates and I have been requesting a written policy for several months. <coughs> excuse me. The proposed policy that is attached to the agenda provides details on procedures, but only a general statement on what funds will be used for. Quote, for the benefit, education, and welfare of inmates. As you consider voting on this policy, please consider developing more specific criteria so that these funds are not as reserve funds to be used in place of general funds thank you doctor we didn't want to get too specific because that creates a limitation uh, and, and uh, uh, but trust me uh, uh, as long as I'm on this board and other people of like mind are on this board uh, uh, the the uh, funds will be used for the benefit uh, of the of the inmates and not for general operating procedures. Anybody else on agenda items? Joan? In Joan Hodawana, it's 101 Penn Avenue. Um, in the same vein, we were talking about um, what monies go into um, the county's general fund and what monies go into various prison accounts, including the canteen fund. And as you, because I know that uh, Ward and Betty in his uh, report is going to talk about uh, a software upgrade, I guess, with Global Tellink, GTL. And as you recall, Global Tellink provides the phone service at the prison. And um, I guess it was in February that, uh, Jeff, it was your article, was it not? You were talking about the phone rates at the various prisons. And it turned out that um, Lackawanna County Prison uh, inmates pay $3.15 for a 15-minute phone call. And I think the long distance is 21 cents a minute, which is extremely expensive for some of these inmates. Now, I understand that Global Tellink uh, pays an upfront supplemental payment of $750,000 uh, under this contract and monthly payments of at least $37,000 for the three-year deal. But that money doesn't go into any of the prison accounts. It goes into the county's general fund. And if we're going to be charging these high phone rates for the inmates in the prison, shouldn't that money from Global Telling go into one of the prison accounts, preferably the canteen account, rather than supporting all of Lackawanna County. 
I, I see no other rationalization for, or justification for those high phone rates. So as you look at this and the issue of global telling comes up again, maybe we need to re-look where we put that $750,000 in those three years of $37,000 uh, monthly, um, it makes no sense to be putting into the county's general fund and not using it for the benefit of the prisoners. If on the other hand, a 15 minute phone call costs them $3.15, it's important that the inmates stay in contact with their families. And we don't want to make it difficult for them to do that. Uh, also, maybe they need to make calls to their lawyers. I don't know. But $3.15 is more than I would pay or that I do pay uh, as a private citizen. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on agenda items? Okay. Uh, if not, we'll move on to the controller's report. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm off my game today. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the motion to approve uh, current payables for the uh, Community Correction Center and the prison. I trust everyone has had an opportunity to review those in advance. And assuming that you have, I'll entertain a motion uh, uh, to approve those current payables. So moved. I have a second. All right. On the question, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, that motion is approved and the current payables will be paid. Now we'll go to the uh, controller. Mr. DeBilio? Yes, Your Honor. The controller's office reviewed the prison inmate and canteen account reconciliations which were prepared by the prison business office for the month of April 2019 and found no discrepancies between the reconciliations and the bank statements. The balance in the inmate account was $597,095.28 as of April 30th of 2019. The balance in the canteen checking account was $434,989.70 as of April 30th. And in addition, as of April 30th, 2019, the canteen account owned two certificates of deposit one valued at $15,000 and the other at $132,041.81, which totals $147,041.81. And that concludes my report. Okay. I note that uh, the CDs are coming due both this year. <coughs> One yes, of them right. at the end of June, so I guess we can address that uh, at the time of our June meeting. Will we be able to do that, or is that? Yes, I think we can. Okay. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions for Controller DeBilio? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve his report. So move. Second. On the question, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. So uh, controller's report is approved. Mr. Jeffers, uh, we'll hear from you on the Community Correction Center report, please. Good afternoon, board. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The Community Correction Center report for the month of April 2019, item one, our program totals male work release had 53 participants, female work release had eight participants. Adult house arrest had 116 participants, and juvenile house arrest had 22 participants. Item two, our program's revenues for the month of April totaled $75,151.14. Item three, our program's expenses totaled $95,490.27. Item four, our program's completions for the month, work release had nine, house arrest had 33. Item four, our program's violations, work release had 11, house arrest had 14. Item five, our program's warrants total six for work release and three for house arrest. Item seven, our budget report, overtime is at 31%, expenses at 31%, revenue at 32%. Item eight, our personnel has two part-time openings. Item nine is the women's work release proposed lease. That concludes my report. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Jeffers on his report? 
everybody had an opportunity to review the proposed uh, lease for the women's uh, work release apartments. Does anybody have any questions about that? So our current lease will expire May 31st. Expires the end of the month. Yes, sir. Okay. And we're going to fill uh, all four apartments? We should, yes. Okay. There's always people waiting. Yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Okay. I mean, there are times during the course of the year where the beds are empty. That's, that's part of the, the nature that we deal with, in the, in, even in the men's, too. But, uh, yeah, we should be able to fill them. Okay. Do you have any reservations or any questions about the lease? No, I don't. There was there was a couple of things that, that I had to go through with them. The security deposit, um, you know, I had taken this to the uh, the board of commissioners for a work session. They asked me to go back and talk to the landlord about uh, maybe getting rid of the security deposits. He um, didn't want to do that if, uh, if somebody from us that was under our control. Uh, destroyed his one of the apartments or caused damage up there we would not be liable for it that's what he was he was coming back with if, if somebody that that's under a court order that's in one of our apartments does damage to his property he has no recourse to get it back from us he would have to get it back from them and they're simply not going to do that so he's said no to that okay uh, there was another thing about renters insurance and then we did scratch out the renters insurance uh, we uh, we take care of their property, so there's, there's no need for the, the renter's insurance. The beds and stuff are ours in there. You know, the furniture we bring in, we either pay for or we get donated to us. So there's nothing that they bring in other than their actual clothing and hygiene products and kitchen products that would be. Okay. So we're talking about an expenditure of $78,000 yes, in sir. total for the year. Yes, sir. That would go from June 1st through uh, May of 2020, May 31st of 2020 next year. Okay. Is there any grant money? Brian well, we're, we, you know, Reggie has actually given me a couple things to look at for grant money, but mm -hmm. applying for it and getting it within the next couple of weeks, or even within the last month, is, is highly doubtful. The state also said that they would also look at it again for us when the state budget is passed in June. Uh, so we'll go back and touch base with uh, Senator Blake's office then. Uh, really can't do anything prior to that. The grant that we had was not re-upped re in the state uh, last year. We had it from two years ago. So the money that was allocated for that grant no longer existed in the uh, 2019 budget, 2018 budget. You know, they go from June, June to June. Um, so we will definitely reach out to Senator Blake's office again uh, after the, uh, the state budget is um, passed. Who's the actual signatory on our behalf? On our behalf would be me. Okay. Yeah, that's why I sent it to the attorneys to, to look at and the board to look at it because I would be your represent, uh, person representing. The authorized the representative. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. When they're, when they're signed over by yourself or one of the other judges, they're solely in my custody. There's no one else that oversees them at that point. Uh, it's just myself and my designee, which would be Pat Lynn or the staff. So it, it's, it ends with myself. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody? All right. So uh, I'll entertain a, a, a motion to approve uh, Mr. Jeffers signing off on this lease. So moved. Second. On the question? I, I just came in, so I'm wondering where we're at. Okay, sorry, yes, uh, and we'll reflect that uh, Commissioner Cummings has arrived and District Attorney Powell has arrived and Commissioner O'Malley has arrived, so we have a full slate. We were at a law enforcement memorial service that did most of this. Um, we're considering the lease for the Women's Work Release uh, Center. Oh, good, okay. That's where we are. Thank you. Okay. So it's a proposed expo expenditure of $78,000 for the year. It would commence on June 1 of this year and, and on May 31 of 2020. That includes $72,000 for uh, uh, the rental and a $6,000 uh, 
security deposit, which presumably would be returned uh, right. at the conclusion of the I report. believe that the way I have worked it out with the, the landlord is if the board passes this, we will both go into the apartments together and go through the, the place to make sure that everything is in order for him. Make a video uh, record? Yeah. Yeah, I would do that. I would do that. I was going to take pictures, but a video record, sure, um, is, is fine. We can do that. And uh, therefore, after which, you know, it, this, this expires next year. So once again, I go back to if the board is unhappy or he is unhappy, the landlord, with our arrangement, I think in January of next year, we could start looking for different places or something along those lines. If we don't use the four apartments on a consistent basis, I, I think that it would be, uh, you know, I would come back to the board and recommend, you know, dropping one or, or something along those lines. Um, but for now, this is what we have in front of us. And I think that we should we should take advantage of it right now. And once again, the property is about two blocks from our offices, so we're there all the time. Uh, the, the women that are there also are able to walk down to us, um, those who aren't driving, and it's a very convenient uh, location for them. And he provides electric, uh, water, hot water. Yes, he provides everything except cable, which was a. Uh, which was provided prior to that. Uh, if we did sign this, uh, I wasn't going to contact the cable company until I had something of an agreement from the board if we were gonna go forward. I can't find it on my page here, there it is. Um, they don't provide phone services or uh, cable. Or television cable. Yeah, right? Wi-Fi, That's that kind of stuff, where the, the previous landlord did. I would try to tie that in with my current bill, uh, which is under a business agreement with uh, Comcast for the 614 building, so, uh, 614 Spruce Street building, okay. um, and try to tie that in if we could. If not, then we'll have to come to an agreement with them uh, through Comcast with something else. All right, yes, I have a motion. Second. And a second, right? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. any opposed? <coughs> okay. Uh, the ayes have us. You have our authority to execute us. Uh, and I, it's my understanding that uh, this will come out of the general fund. No, this is coming out of the uh, canteen. We discussed it at the work session. They come out of the canteen, and if for some reason that the canteen starts to bottom out because of the welfare of the females, that the county would pick up the bill. Why would the? I disagree with that. I think you're making a big mistake. Uh, I, I, I don't think it's right. I don't think it's legal to use the canteen fund. And I, I, number one, and I, I don't think it's appropriate to use it. I think that uh, if you're going to, the canteen fund it can't be used for operation of the prison, number one. And you can't fund the male work release out of the uh, general fund and not the female work you release. You the uh, male work release center to prepare it for when they would go back downtown three years ago. That's where the money was taken out of, out of the work center fund. So the idea was that we will absolutely, and we spoke about it at a work, se work, work session, all I three of us were there. I, I wish I... It was brought up to us. I, I thought that it would have been told to you already. George. No, I wish I had yeah. known, because I would have made my feelings known there. I think this is a big problem. I think you're buying a problem by doing this. We, it was, like you said, the welfare of the inmates, that's what we felt that the work center was, and that if some... But you're not paying for the male work release center out of the canteen fund. You're treating female uh, work release uh, inmates differently. That's part of the problem. And I don't believe that you can take the, the canteen fund money and use it for operational expenses. Uh, uh, you know, you, you have a surplus. At least that's what I read in the paper. It was, so utilized, it was utilized in the past to refurbish the men's work center so it would be attainable for them to be using the last three years, three years ago. The money You're, has been taken out, I think, for various things such as, um, is the word here? Yeah. The word, can, can you rattle off a couple of things through the years that the canteen money has been used for? He said, we'll never let the, not, we will not let there be, not have a women's resource center. But the idea was that the funds would be utilized this year because we're midway through our budget. And it wasn't part of our budget for this year. So, is that an expense? But the juvenile detention center was also part of your budget. You have money left no, over from that. It was, only, it was only a little bit of it. It was only utilized into March. You make sure it was dropped at dates on everything. Well, I think it's wrong, and I also 
uh, question the legality of it. And I think that you're making a big mistake uh, by doing that. And I want to be on record uh, uh, for opposing that move. I don't think it's appropriate, and I don't think it's right. I don't know. I don't know if you care. <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to be on the record that the welfare of the inmates would be making sure that we have a work release program with the fact that the commissioners, the board of commissioners, will be there to financially secure it if need be. We are not going to, you know, this is the monies that we utilize for that. Um, I thought that this was already brought to your attention because we had no work. You got my email. Uh, it was brought to my attention after the work session that this is what was discussed and it still hasn't been before commissioners meeting so we did make a motion that you to send mr jeffers forward so we could we'll have to deal with this at the next commissioners meeting I, and that's fine i just want my position to be known because sure. it, it sounds to me like uh yeah, you're going to do whatever you want to do not, when you get not, to the commissioners it's about, meeting it's, it's not about we're going to do what we're going to do we have work sessions and that's where we make the decision that if it goes on to the actual Commissioners board meeting. It's the county's obligation to house its inmates. And so that comes out of the county's fund. It doesn't come out of a canteen fund that's generated by uh, inmate purchases. Essentially, you're asking the inmates to pay for themselves. And, and that's, that's wrong, in my view. Can I ask well, a solicitor Sofinelli his thoughts on it? <laughs> and what, what specifically is your question on that? We're talking about how to fund the, the women's work release apartment right. lease, um, whether we use canteen funds or you know, county general funds for, for that apartment. It's, I think the use uh, uh, from a matter of law is, is not limited. Um, However, it's a matter of board policy and, and the vote on the use of the canteen funds. And the judges raised the question of, of whether there's equal treatment for men and women based on the funding and, and the revenues generated by the inmates. That, that's a separate question I don't have an answer to today. At this point, does it go forward where we can go forward with letting Mr. Jeffers rent the apartment? Yes, it's important to have the facility for the female work release inmates. but. County's always paid for them in the past. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, that's my question. Who, who paid for it before? No, the canteen fund. Well, no. Was it, it was a grant, and a grant, then yeah. it, was, it was never paid for us in the past because the work release center you was did. run out of the... Oh. The work release center was run out of the Lackawanna County Prison, and then there was a grant that was brought forward that paid for the apartment for the last, I don't know, two years, and Mr. Jeffers can get into that. So when they came forward, it was never budgeted for in our budget this year. So my thoughts, and we discussed this at a work session, was that it would be taken out of the canteen, and if there was an issue in the future, that we would make sure that's funded. Because it is about the welfare of getting our inmates back out on the streets. It is their money, and it gives them an opportunity to be, to, to be able to be back out in the workforce. So and that's what the idea is. Never to hurt anybody. This is about our current budget. And if that's they were right. incarcerated, that would come out of the mm -hmm. operational budget. Correct. Not, what's Correct. that? If they were incarcerated, that would come out of the operational budget. Exactly. They are not basically the work center. They're okay. In the work release center. That's okay. not in the work release center they'd be in the prison proper and the county would be sustaining them so there's no difference it's just they're still in confinement it's still the county's obligation to house them okay the understanding is that the canteen could be used for things that has to be utilized towards the inmates so if we can have mr betty come up and rattle off all the different things through the years that we've had then you know mr betty would you like to come up to the podium Could you talk about some of the stuff that's been utilized out of the canteen fund over the last so many years? Sure. Um, rather than going off my memory, I do have the, uh, the statement uh, from the previous month that was uh, prepared by 
our business department and it'll have a item somewhat it won't cover every single thing that that can get hit but I'll, I'll go through it until you tell me to stop um, indigent kits for indigent inmates um, legal mail hygiene items uh, the fresh favorite program we have to prepay for things um, mattresses and pillows uh, footwear postage meter refill um, I can't read this writing uh, haircuts, haircuts. Um, the law library the Lexus Nexus that we use um, the tablets Tim the tablets were free so th th we don't uh, pay for those and we didn't get them implemented yet yet either uh, it's because there's no decision on that either. management fees that have to be paid to Oasis uh, and Praces um, missalettes for the inmate population uh, the religious oriented missalettes uh, all, all religions that are included there um, GED prep course um, uh, outreach services games flex pens Tim has it ever been used for basic housing for housing no no I mean we have purchased um, prison uniforms out of that that's part of the in indigent kit for some folks has it ever um, been used to supplement or pay the prison for uh, for the jail for the expenses for them being housed in the jail Tim talk about um, I think the well, let me, let me okay, answer sorry, that sorry. question please no Have we used, utilized it for a dryer? Mm -hmm. Have we um, we're utilizing the funds for the uh, X-ray? We right. we definitely are for that whole body scanner. Okay. I'm not sure about the dryer. I I think the that dryer was, was definitely some. I was going to say I think that was just before I started. I think they did utilize it for the purchase of an industrial dryer. Yeah, we did. And that's fine. That was brought up. The, the scanner was brought up in a meeting, and we discussed it, and everybody agreed on it. What I'm talking about is these inmates are confined in the work release center and that's part of the county's obligation out of the general fund to to fund their confinement that's not what we're talking about here you're talking about taking the canteen money and and paying operational expenses and well, some of those things that actually that he's talking about is stuff that would actually be part of the operational expenses. Not housing. Well, not housing. This is basic housing. It's, a, it's, a, it's the, the fundamental uh, responsibility of the county. We have a prison system, but we have to house them. See, so the idea was that this was not part of our budget, so we talked about this at our work session, well, and this I, is so. I appreciate that that's the idea, but it's not a good idea. That's what I'm saying. Kelly, figure out the judiciary. I mean, what's that? What other departments would be paying for it? None. And this was this was a discussion. The, the problem came in is that there was we did not budget for it, Judge. And well, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Yes, I I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. I just I I we put this this uh, uh, work release in place to save money. So what I haven't had the opportunity to see is where are we saving money because. Well, I think Mr. Jeffers responded to that. I wasn't last, here, so. The last two <laughs> he gave us the, the savings. Where is the savings on that? Again, I think this is a conversation for our commission. You have to have the conversation, okay. have it in public. Okay, well then we'll, then we could be brought up in front of the next commissioner's meeting then, if that's what we'd like. I mean, we have an obligation, I absolutely agree 100%. Oh, I do too, I absolutely. Yes. To pay for this yes I I'm the first person that was on the record is saying that the work release center should not be at the prison which it was I was also one of the people who read it downtown that pushed to bring it downtown and made sure that we had it set and ready to go because there was a major facelift <laughs> that I needed to have done before we went into it if you agree with the statement that it's our obligation county's obligation to fund it then there shouldn't be any further discussion. The county should pay for it out of the general fund, and that's it. We'll have to we'll have to take it from another department. That's all. We'll have to take the money out of somewhere else. I do not believe that it's anything that's wrong that we'd be utilizing budget. the money for. I but we will. That, but I do. You mean this is about the fact of 
us providing a service. We're trying to make sure that they're equal to the men's department. And what the people of Lackawanna County have to realize is that the budget is $20 million with about $6 million in different monies that we receive to be able to cause us. So we're trying to... I, I, I understand what you're saying, but it's definitely for the betterment of our inmates. I truly believe that. So. And that's the obligation. Okay. Anything else? Nothing for me. Just, uh, okay. what are we doing? To approve uh, Director Jeffers report. Go on. Second? Second. On the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 And you'll get a, a finalized copy of that to Mr. Salfinelli. Police? Yes. Yes. When it when it's signed. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Warden, you stayed in the front row, so you can be closer for your report. All right. Good afternoon. Um, the average daily population for April was 851 inmates, of which 563 were county inmates. And currently we have 823, uh, 720 are adult males. We have two juvenile males and 101 adult females. Um, there are 200 U.S. Marshal detainees, 67 state parole violators, and 11 that are being held um, for other counties. The overtime out of county boarding and community service reports are attached. Uh, the staffing update is that we have 174 full-timers on staff and two part-timers. There are zero out on workers' comp, zero out on continuous FMLA. We have four officers on administrative leave, and we have zero vacancies full-time, uh, 11 part-time vacancies. The total number is 178 full-time officers and 13 uh, part-time officers. FMLA, 34 officers have intermittent FMLA amounting to 19% of the COs. Budget as of April 30th, revenue was at 41% and expenses were at 31%. Inmates at or past their minimum, the total is 17. Four have submitted home plans or and are awaiting parole. Two have no home plans. One has been ordered to complete programming before being considered for parole. Four have had parole denied due to recent misconducts. And six have been remanded for the balance of their sentences. Extraordinary occurrence reports, there are nine. I know the report I submitted said seven. We had two over the weekend. Um, there are nine since the last board meeting. On 419, a county inmate was placed in the restraint chair for his safety after attempting to hang himself. 427, an uh, inmate was placed in the restraint chair as per our medical department after refusing to comply with orders to be placed in a suicide cell. 429, a county inmate repeatedly banged his head on a cell door, causing lacerations to his forehead. He too was placed in the restraint chair for his protection. 5-2, a county inmate was placed in the restraint chair for staff safety after being combative with staff. Also on 5-2, a county inmate was placed into the restraint chair upon commitment. He was highly intoxicated, threatening staff and uncooperative. 5-5, a county inmate assaulted several officers. He was placed into the restraint chair for staff safety. 5-7, a county inmate was combative and uncooperative upon commitment. He was placed into the restraint chair for officer safety. 5-13, we had two incidents, uh, not the same individual, but one was a county inmate was, who was placed in the restraint chair after making threats of uh, harm to staff. And uh, co another county inmate was refusing to obey orders for a strip search, and he was placed in the restraint chair so that a proper search could be conducted. Priya, there, there were 10 allegations of Priya violations in the month of April. Seven of the allegations were inmate on inmate nature, uh, citing sexual misconduct. Two of those seven were deemed unfounded and five were deemed unsubstantiated. There were two allegations of staff on inmate sexual misconduct. Both of those were deemed unfounded and there was one allegation of staff on inmate sexual harassment and it too was deemed unfounded. All the completed investigations have been forwarded to the district attorney's office. GTL upgrade, after months of uh, negotiating with GTL, um, GTL, as someone mentioned earlier, is our phone provider. The, the prison and GTL have come to an agreement regarding a significant software upgrade for the prison's offender management system. The OMS, 
The OMS is a computer software package that has been in use by the prison since 2004, and all of our electronic records are stored in it or on it. Um, it's a vital information storage site for our daily operation of the facility. GTL has agreed to provide the Lackawanna County Prison with a free upgrade to its web-based system known as OSME in exchange for a one-year contract extension. So when they tell you nothing is free, that they're right. There's a one-year extension. <laughs> the current contract runs out in July of 2020, and so that extension would take them into July of uh, 2021. The, the amendment will provide the following enhancements for the prison. We'll get the free OMSE upgrade combined with the one-year extension. We'll also get a f what they call dynamic imaging. That's the pictures that we're able to take. Our, our current system is outdated and, as a matter of fact, is um, broken. And we've had to use, we've had to institute using a digital camera temporarily that doesn't take a good high quality picture. Um, they don't make the parts for the old system. It's, it's getting that old that it's a, a dinosaur and kind of outdated. So we'll get a free dynamic imaging software and that would be installed within uh, eight weeks of the effective date of the amendment. Um, and we'd also have a new revenue sharing percentage. I, I apologize, I don't know what the current one is right now. For some reason, 41% in my head, the revenue sharing would go up to 52%. Um, but don't quote me on the 41, but it's, it's right around there. Um, the, the anticipated increase in monthly commissions would be about $8,000 a month. Uh, the provision of both the OMSE upgrade and dynamic imaging software hardware package are valued by GTL at approximately $275,000. Uh, and what I'm hoping for is that the board would favorably recommend this agreement to the Board of Commissioners so that this issue can be addressed at the next uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. And that concludes my report. I don't know if I missed it, but how much is the one-year extension? The one-year extension is free. I mean, that, that is part of it. They, they will give us this OMSE upgrade. It's a web-based um, system. They'll give that to us free along with the digital imaging package. So they just want the extension. What they want is a one-year extension on the contract to take them into July of 2021. Will this facilitate the video visitation through the tablets? I, I, I believe it's separate. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I believe that's independent of the OMS system, even though it is GTL. Oh, okay. all right. My, my mistake. Yeah. Any other questions for the warden on that or the rest of his report? Okay. Uh, so let's take a vote on recommending the, the warden's request to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, uh, I'll <coughs> entertain a motion to do that. So Second. Second. Okay, on the question. I'm not sure, how is this saving, is this saving money somewhere? I mean, what is this going to do for us? It's, it's going to improve our ability to track individuals and to draw up um, information on individuals current and in the past when we move forward in time. It's gonna make our record keeping, electronic record keeping much more efficient and our current system much easier to deal with. Than, not, not that I have great um, issues with the current one, but there are many things that are outdated. We're, we're used to that, but it's, it's just really a technological upgrade. Uh, we haven't had that in 15 years. So it's just getting it up into the modern times where things are web-based and out on the cloud and easily drawn down. Again, it's more user-friendly. We do, the one big benefit is that dynamic imaging is a much better uh, resolution, a much better camera system for taking the pictures of the newly committed individuals. We sometimes take pictures when there's an assault so that we can provide that to police departments and whatnot. Didn't we just upgrade these when we for in 2017? Didn't we upgrade so everybody would be able to communicate between each other? Am this I missing is something? Meetings, is this, is the, this is an upgrade to the. Yeah, we what what we did, commissioners, um, is we had just um, signed the contract. I'm trying to think at a time with GTL. Uh, I, I believe it was in 
It was in 2017. It was a I three-year we deal. Did, yeah. Um, this is just, it's an upgrade we've been trying to get from them for about seven, eight years to go to this OMSE. And it's an offer to get the latest and best technology available that's out there with GTL system for our facility. Um, and it's $275,000, and that doesn't include tablets. We're not, this is the one we were talking about, tablets for the inmates, correct? It's, it doesn't cost us anything. Um, but they're saying, basically, if you wanted to buy it, it would be $275,000 for this upgrade that we're going to provide to you free with a one-year extension. With a one-year extension. Yeah, that's the, the that's tablets, the price. The tablets are independent of this. Yeah. And they'd be a separate charge. Yeah, and we do they're have the tablets. Free. Free. That are free at that deal. Yeah, the tablets were all part of that. They were they were offered free as part of that contract with GTL. Um, we haven't, just to give you a quick update, we have not implemented them as of yet because we are getting an advanced version. They have an upgrade, and we weren't going to put in the old system when they have this new system. So we're just waiting on that. We're still getting them free. Yeah, I'd like to come over and see what you have now. I'm going to work on that. I, I need to make an appointment with you to come over and sure. check all this out. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions on that? So all in favor of recommending to the board that they extend uh, the contract one year? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And then I'll entertain a motion to approve the warden's report for this month. So uh, we have a move and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, warden. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks warden. warden. All right, and new business, we talked about the uh, policy for the commissary account. I trust it's been circulated. Uh, um, I know we had some initial comments back from Controller DeBilio concerning uh, uh, auditing, uh, but uh, I didn't get any other responses from anybody else. So uh, this is in its proposed final form. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve it. So moved. And a second? All right. Oh. On the question? Yeah, I'd like to read over. I didn't see it, Judge. I'm sorry. Okay. What did she say? The uh, Commissioner the Cummings hasn't it? seen it, uh, the policy. Did you make a change on it that you specifically wanted to bring out, or was it just? <clears throat> no, there, there were suggested changes made by uh, Mr. DeBilio with respect to auditing, um, and we incorporated those. So this is the final uh, proposed policy. Okay, was, um, did the controller have a, an issue with what was previously done, or is this just something new? No, there were no issues with us. My office worked with uh, Solicitor Safanelli to help formulate the new policy, mainly from an auditing standpoint. Um, and all of the, the procedures that are currently uh, being performed in the new policy, uh, with the exception of one, uh, a, an annual audit by a, an independent third party oh, good. Okay. is being recommended here to have a look at the, at the canteen account. And um, other than that, everything else is basically the same same thing. right okay thank you and I think it's important to have an independent auditor yes, since I agree. the county controller is on the board right. okay. okay so I'll entertain a motion to approve the policy I think I did I think I got a second and we had some comments any other questions all in favor aye, aye. any opposed the ayes have it the policy is uh, is adopted uh, any other new business from uh, any of the members Okay. I'll give an opportunity to the public to address the board. Joan? Of course. Joan Hodawana, 101 Penn Avenue. Mr. Jeffers, yes, with regard to your lease for uh, uh, the apartment for work release and cable TV, I don't have cable TV and I get right. 23 channels Mine for free with my guys. indoor antenna. Okay, you can buy them for like $19 to $59, they work. Why not consider an indoor antenna, it's a one-time purchase, instead of paying Comcast, 
whom I think has some issues. Um, we can certainly look at that. Take a look at that. You know, I, mean, I, I see no need to pay a cable TV bill. Cause I don't either. Don't. Yeah. I mean, if it was for me, I wouldn't I haven't have paid Comcast in years. My last bill was $125 a, bill anyway. a month, and I dumped them. By the way, Joan, that, that <coughs> expense is, is paid from the canteen account for the benefit paid by the inmates for the benefit of, of the You inmates. mean the cable? That benefit? But still, yeah. hey, just buy one thing and you have more money to spend on something else for them. <laughs> uh, you know, tw don't you think 23 channels is enough? Yeah, no, I mean. I grew do, up with four. With the so. I grew today, up with I mean. three. I'm older than you. Uh, okay, that's one thing. Um, Warren Betty. I thought I heard you say when you were giving the laundry list of things that canteen funds were used for in the past, mattresses and pillows? Yes. Mattresses? Isn't that like an essential yes, operational requirement? Why would you pay for that out of canteen funds and not, not general funds? I don't know that, uh, was it all for all mattresses, Warden, or some orthopedic mattresses, special no, mattresses? It's, it's all mattresses. Okay. That, that sounds a little hokey to me. I think you're obligated to provide your inmates with a mattress. You're right. And I think Mr. Bolas constantly raised the issue about My the pillows. pillows. And I think pillows ought to be also an item of issue and not come out of canteen funds. So I'd like to see that changed. Well, the mattresses that we utilize have a built-in pillow. Oh, they do? Oh, well, that's fine. But yes. the point is, I don't see why canteen funds is used for providing mattresses. That doesn't pass the stink test in my, my estimation. Was this just for the work release that we're talking about? No. Oh. Canteen funds. Okay. Okay, so that, that's not right. Um, finally, I've been spending a lot of time both at the county level and uh, municipal level, Scranton, uh, looking at uh, delinquent taxes. So one of the issues that comes up is uh, employees, and I've been looking at that too, uh, who are delinquent in their taxes. So I have a question about uh, hiring policy, and you may be the best person to answer this. When you have a job applicant, do you go and check to see if they are current in all their taxes and fees? When you have an annual job performance review, do you do the same thing? And if you promote somebody, because I'm telling you, as a taxpayer, I'm sick and tired of picking up the slack for people who are not paying their fair share. I have no issue with someone who has a financial crisis coming in and asking for a payment plan. Okay, I mean, that happens to everybody occasionally. But for people who just, I have no patience with them, and I don't think anybody should be hired if their taxes and uh, fees are not current. I'm not just talking at the county level. There should be no state tax lien. There should be no federal tax lien. Everything should be current or they should be able to explain why not. And they should be on some kind of payment plan. Uh, I, I think that should go for hiring, for retention when they have their annual performance reviews, and for any kind of promotion. I don't think that uh, the rest of us as taxpayers should be picking up that slack. Um, they're getting paid by taxpayer dollars one way or the other. They have to pay their fair share of the load. That's all I have. Thank you. Anybody else? Dr. Bressler. Yeah, I just wanted to start by saying that the prison board meeting schedule online is still incorrect. And I think I've been asking since the beginning of 2019 that it be corrected. Uh, it appears to list last year's dates. And maybe it's not important for those of us who regularly attend this meeting, but it seems like a really easy correction to avoid confusion to ensure others have access to current information. You might not think this is a big deal, but an hour before this meeting, I had an email from somebody who said, the meeting is not today, it's May 16th. She then called the county and found out that, yes, it is today. The wrong date was online. So it might not sound like a big deal, but if we're gonna talk about openness and transparency and trying to involve people in their government, we should have at least basic 
information that's correct. Tracy, I was told before it would be corrected. Is it? She's not. She's not sure where you're looking because where, where where are you? Where is it listed? And it is correct, so that she can. Well, it doesn't matter where it is correct if it's on our incorrect. Webpage. Well, if it's that's correct an issue. on the web page, that's where it people is. look. So if you type in Lackawanna County Prison Board meetings, you will uh, get a page on your website, and it, it says Wednesdays at 1230, but it has the wrong dates. So today's meeting is scheduled for May 16th. Just trying to find out where you're looking, because she looked at okay. it, and it's saying it's correct on our website. So. Maybe it's coming oh, up somewhere. It's your website. You know. Well, are you looking on the website? On LackawannaCounty.org? Or are you being yes. by a search engine someplace else? Absolutely. It's your website. At the beginning, it, at the bottom, it says <sighs> legislative something where I can click on and get the agenda for the meeting. It's definitely your website. I'll figure it out. And I, can, I still don't know where you're looking. OK, you're looking. and I can show it to Tracy. Yeah, maybe you should sit okay. with her, yeah. That might be helpful. Yeah. yeah. Stick around okay. after the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, I've been asking for answers to questions about medical care. I raised those questions at the January meeting and the March meetings relating to women's medical care. And in fact, at the March meeting, I provided those questions in writing to the board. My questions are not about the quality of care and do not require a medical assessment. I am simply requesting an answer about whether annual exams as indicated in the current contract and gender specific exams recommended by NCCHC are completed. When can I expect those answers? I forwarded your letter to uh, the medical unit at the at the prison and I've, I've had some discussion with them I don't have full okay. answers for you there are guidelines that they use that are different from the guidelines you refer to in your uh, in, in your presentation mm -hmm. um, but certain things are sent out for they don't have the facility to do mammograms at the prison mm -hmm. um, they they do have the equipment that necessary for things like pap smears uh, if it's requested, it's given. It's Remember, we're a county prison, so the vast majority of inmates are not there for uh, a year. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so an annual exam, uh, mm -hmm. if they're not there for a year, they're not going to get an annual exam unless they request something of specific. Right. Okay. But there are women who have been there for more than a there year. There are. Yes. There are. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I'll look forward to those, those uh, answers. Um, and, uh, in relationship to Priya, could the warden again explain the difference between unfounded and unsubstantiated Priya complaints? People have asked me what the difference is. I can't really explain it. So if he could clarify that again, that would warden? be great. Sure. Yeah, I would like to know the answer to that too. Clearly, no basis to the allegation. Unsubstantiated, basically could boil it down to a uh, he said, he said, he said, she said, she said, he yeah. said, kind of ordeal. So, we don't have proof of either way. We can't say this did happen. We can't say this okay. did not happen. It, it boils down to a lot of the stuff we're dealing with is a claim. Okay. There's no, there's nothing to support the claim, but there's nothing to prove it, uh, prove it or prove it. Uh, it's kind of out of the air. There's nothing we can do about it. Okay. Um, I know that, that they, those complaints are forwarded to the DA's office. Does the DA's office further investigate the unsubstantiated claims? We do, but uh, of course our standard is even higher. It's proof beyond all reasonable doubt, but we do uh, review it, all complaints that come in uh, and our detectives uh, make an assessment based on that. Some require further investigation uh, and some do not based upon the information that we receive. Thank you. Uh, who is currently serving as the PREA coordinator? The PREA coordinator has been uh, Maury Finland. Uh, she's there since 2014. Is she still serving in that yeah. position? Okay.
Okay, and then I, um, I actually thought that you would wait for public comments before you voted on the extension for the GTL um, extension. Uh, as, as we know, the warden asked for that extension. You approved it. Um, the, really, the contract extension undercuts the contract bidding process that, that we take very seriously. Uh, the warden also said that the upgrade to the OMS system is something that he's been negotiating for for seven years. So why wasn't that upgrade negotiated in the current contract? or you misheard one of the two. I, I'm only there as the warden for less than three years. Okay. Um, it's something that the prison system itself has right. been asking for for several years. Oh, but several. I didn't start negotiating until okay. we got this contract because I wanted to get that in the current contract, which I wasn't able to get in there. So I just, at that point, moved into continuing negotiating to get this very val valuable tool thrown in free. Okay. So I, I thought you said seven, you said several, which isn't much different. Uh, the current contract awarded $750,000 upfront to the county and revenue sharing of at least $37,000 monthly. That's a heck of a lot of money. Yes. It's over $2 million over three years. Um, where does that money go? Uh, does it go into the county's general fund? And it appears that that's the case. Is it specifically earmarked for use at the prison? And you just have approved an extension that would add $8,000 to the monthly commission, a revenue sharing percentage of a whopping 52%. Some of these numbers are really hard to believe. Could lower costs for phone calls be negotiated instead? Please keep in mind that it's the families and the inmates themselves, often people with very limited resources, that are generating the commissary and the phone profits. Can we, at some point, cut them a break in these costs instead of using the commissary and the phone calls to generate profits for the country? Uh, the county. Should this be a money-making proposition? Thanks. Well, the commissary account isn't for the county, okay? It's right. for the inmates, all right? And as far as uh, whatever money goes to the county, the money that goes to the county goes to run the prison. So <laughs> it, they, they have to use that money from this contract to help run the county, which includes running the prison. So it's, uh, um, I know it sounds like a lot of money, but costs a lot of money to run the prison. Right, but could the commissary costs and the phone costs be reduced? Why do they have to be inflated? Why does there have to be such a big They're profit lowered. They were lowered. generated? Lowered. They were the lowered. Contract. I know they were lowered. They were lowered a little bit, both the phone calls and also commissary uh, products by, by pennies. Uh, could they be lowered more in comparison to charges at state institutions? These charges are really inflated. Okay, Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else from the public wish to address the board? Okay. I just want to say one last thing before we Use the microphone. Oh. Oh. Yes. I just want to bring up that. I wanted to make sure that on the record that it was stated that Solicitor Safanelli that the money that's utilized from the canteen is utilized at the discretion of the prison board. Am I right? Correct. Just wanted to put that on the record. And that as chairman of the Board of Commissioners, our job is absolutely we want to make sure that our inmates have an opportunity to go out into work release and have those opportunities. Well, we got hit with a number that was in the middle of a fiscal year mm -hmm. after our budget was already settled that this is something that we have to be concerned with and that's what we're concerned with at all time 26 million dollars is what's expended to hold to actually have a county prison that's a lot of money and taxpayers lack one a county get concerned with those numbers because we hear those issues all the time so that's what we look at when we're looking into increasing or having any type of situations that will occur on our budget so with that being said, 
I just wanted on the record that the money from the canteen can be expended by the discretion of this board. Am I right? Legally, yes. Legally, okay. Under just the just wanted to make sure. Adopted. Okay. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, sir. Uh, just one.